got a Daikin VRV3 here. And my, have I got an interesting one today. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. That's a transducer. Bigger the glob, the better the job, right? Well, I'm going to get this out of here and then explain what that's about. I'm just going to throw this out here real quick. I, I like to pull a bit of a vacuum on my recovery setup. I don't take forever to do that because I am still going to purge it with refrigerant. But when you're pulling a vacuum, make sure that you cycle all of your ball valves. I wish I had caught this on camera, but I dropped several hundred microns just after cycling it and letting it suck the air out that gets trapped in here. So just make sure you do that because you can have a lot of them. Uh, you know, if you're using yellow jacket hoses or something similar. See, that one that one just got a little bit more air out of it as I cycled it that way. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these non-serviceable sensors. And I have used a pinch-off tool before, but when you've got a system that's got really high capacity, lots of refrigerant, it's not my first choice. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to um, drill a hole in here. Well, I've still got some pressure, so it blows the chips out, and I'm gonna install these access fittings. And then from there, I'm gonna make these fully serviceable. Now what I need to do here is drill this hole kind of fast, and I've showed this before. I'm not gonna use a unibit, because I just wanna punch right through it the exact size. Got a 3 8 piece of copper over there to stop me from punching through to the bottom have it started here and yes I am moving the location I, I don't really like sensors flapping out here where the weight can just sort of make them bounce and break free I'm gonna put both of these upright so let me get that done this one here is being a little stubborn and with quarter inch holes I've found that just a little Phillips bit sorry the filming is very difficult in this unit. Just a little Phillips bit, following it out a bit is all you really need. Now, this is brass, so you do need to use flux on that. It's not like brazen copper to copper. You need flux for brass. And I'm probably gonna use a safety sieve just because of the way it flows and uh, this being a tight area. Really like this striker, by the way. Pick that up in the supply house. And just, this is reducing flame. This is oxidizing. You don't want oxidizing. You want either neutral, that's going to be your hottest flame, or just slightly reducing. That'll prevent oxide. Or help prevent, I should say. The majority of the mass is that fitting, not the pipe. So even though the pipe is kind of a heat sink, still got a little refrigerant purging out of there. But I, I kind of want to get up in there. I'm, I'm just putting a little bit of braze there as a heat indicator, really. But now, it, now it's starting to flow. Go around that way. This uh, safety seal by Harris really, really flows nicely. And we got it. Still got off-gassing on this one. Is. These systems are really, really large, and you get a lot of off-gassing unless you've left them empty for a long time. Again, I'm just putting braze there as a heat indicator. That's all it is. I'm not trying to braze before the pipe is hot. Should have put a bit of a bend on this, which I'll do right now. A little harder working with with this wire than with the sticks. Get in here now. Love the smell of that phosgene in the morning. That's a oh, that's a breakfast of champions, right, Hayes? Yep. <laughs> there we go. Gradually heat around a bit. Go. 
toasty. By the way, the other thing old Ham Hands is doing here is replacing these EV power heads. These have a stepper motor in them and I'll show more about that in a minute. And these are just a like a, a magnet style. You gotta take these off and clean them and then we put silicone grease in there to prevent the corrosion. The corrosion, what the corrosion does is interfere with the magnetic field and it can cause these to get out of calibration, but these fail all the time. And like I said, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Here's the plan we're gonna use these fittings. They just have a depressor. That's gonna go on the taps I've raised in and then I've got this double flared and that's gonna go on there. Now, the disadvantage of doing it this way is I have more connections, so I could develop a leak, but my flares are the least of my concerns on this system. <laughs> uh, there's already hundreds of flares, and a lot of them we have already had to fix. This one I messed up. I, I was on the phone trying to show a little love to my wife, and uh, yeah, I, I cut it too short for a double, but it'll be fine for a single unfortunately but um anyways i'm gonna get these made up and get them on the system let me talk about something real quick why is it that sometimes you go to get off uh, like a pressure switch and there's no schrader underneath the best example of this that i can think of is a daikin maverick you have a little section of discharge uh, pipe right off the compressor and you've got a, a fan switch that's got a Schrader, and then you right down from that, you've got a um, high pressure switch, which has a tag that says no Schrader. And that is because there's some mechanical code or something where you can't have a safety, you can't have a valve in line with the safety, and they can, this is considered a valve, okay? It's not an issue in this case because this is a sensor. This unit already has a high and low pressure switch that are the safeties. So we can absolutely go back in with Schrader taps and have this fully serviceable. They're not gonna do that from the manufacturer because brazing it in is a lot cheaper than what we're doing. But this is much better for service. Now, when screwing something on a tap, I like to use a pair of vice grips to hold the hex down there. It's very important that you don't put any rotational uh, torque on these taps. Now, these sensors are not interchangeable. They have different uh, pressure, temperature, or pressure uh, voltage relationships between the two. The green one is here and the black one is down there. That's the low pressure transducer. It's a high pressure. Now, what's all this about? Uh, one evening, I had to make an emergency repair on this unit. And I found that this, this wire here, which is the power feed, in general, on your transducers, you're gonna have power, a lot of times that's five volts, ground and signal back. So the pressure comes in, affects the sensor, and the board gets a voltage back, okay? Uh, so, I think, it, yeah, it was this red wire had broken off down in here. Let's, let's peel this back. Right, right inside the epoxy. So, very difficult to solder unless it's on a bench. I mean, it's, it is possible. But anyways, what I did here is take a back probe. Put some stranded wire in with that T-pin so it made a good connection. Then I've got that feeding into the uh, power wire. I had super glue on that that I used an activator just to instantly harden and that helped hold it in place and waterproof it. And then obviously the silicone just stabilized everything. <laughs> but <laughs> it ran like this for a month. <laughs> oh boy, interesting. The the uh, category of this repair right here is you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, good times. Let's make some space here for the EEV tester. I have not shown this on a video yet. I got a zip tie on it because I was carrying it up a ladder. Ta-da! No, this is not a bomb. 
<laughs> let me uh, peel all this out of here and get some stuff set up okay here is a Daikin BRV um, coil for uh, it's a stepper motor style EEB coil and this is pretty much interchangeable with LG but they do drive differently uh, this is homemade obviously <laughs> and it allows me to test pretty much any sensor or anything like this on a VRV system and uh, someday maybe I would do a video on that and just yeah, can't get that in frame but the different settings anyways <clears throat> so inside of this there is a motor that sits up here a little stepper okay sorry it's windy out if you get a lot of wind noise and that's geared way down like this what this thing here besides being a pretty sweet cutaway allows me to do is like if i got an indoor unit that's bleeding by like the eb failed i can put this on there and manually close it down uh, but that's how they that's how these work and this if you recognize this this is for a um <laughs> this is for one of the big recovery tanks i needed a a knurled uh grip on there because the freaking uh old generation lgs that that little pin in that ev just shoots straight up as soon as you take it off and it is a bear to get get the new ones back on absolutely horrible but let, let's look at this so uh hopefully you can see that but i'm gonna drive it try to get it close up there hopefully it's in focus here's another one and so you can see that turning a lot easier and then there i'm just reversing directions all right let me see if i can find a bad one Beat up it. Man. that right there is a bad one no movement at all so that's not rocket science but what happens is you can own these out all day and they will almost always test good because it's not the motor that fails it's the nylon gears inside that you know chip a tooth and then they lock up so you can sometimes get these to move a bit if you jack the voltage up almost twice of what they normally are but uh, if you'd ever take them off and they look all crusty like this that's another good indication that it's bad but if you're replacing a compressor or doing any kind of major repair these are not that expensive if they're old replace them just straight up replace them don't even worry about diagnosis just replace it it's by far the best thing for the customer these things have been responsible for more compressor deaths on the brb 3s than than any other component that i'm aware of uh, the, the, the fours, they went to the magnetic style and, uh, those are much, much better, much better, much more reliable, much easier to test. Everything about them is better. Almost forgot to show the finished product. As I said, I, I much prefer these to be upright and to me, it's just the most logical direction to put them. Um, we'll get it under pressure and then. Full of vacuum, easy peasy, right? Long day though, huh? <laughs> yeah.